Well, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to try to tackle a most inconvenient water leak issue on this 2008 GMC 2500. Uh, there is a leak on here. What's really upsetting about that, number one, I hate leaks, but you guys know that this has got my $500 truck camper project on the back of it. And what kills a camper? Water leaks. What did this camper have? Water leaks. So anyway, uh, we're in a period here in Alaska, it's wet. August is usually wet. It's pouring down rain outside right now. And um, we noticed uh, that being said, let's cue the water leak. So we notice dripping coming down up under the dash here. A uh, couple quick things I checked first. Come along with me, I'll show you. So the water leak is coming down somewhere from in here. Something that's really bad about that, that yellow that you see is the airbag connection for the passenger side. Uh, not good. Definitely not a good thing to have getting wet. So I will be doing some additional cleaning and dielectric grease of that as we go. But looking upwards here, it was dripping essentially dripping down along in here. So some quick things we're going to check. Number one, that could be potential hazards would be this boot. Is it torn, cracked, pulled loose? I did recently have this apart to do some work in the wiring harness. That looks fine. Is there anything else odd or strange here? No. And I know the water was coming above this point anyway, so we've got to kind of look up. Could there be an issue with the weather stripping something here absolutely so i'm gonna have to spend some time looking around in here this is a non-sunroof truck i can tell you with a moonroof sunroof the most likely issue is you would look somewhere right around here and typically you'd see wet spot in the a pillar it's very common doesn't matter if it's a chevrolet product or whatever general motors there's a tube, a drain here. It's very common those drains pop off. They freeze, they pop off. That's not a problem here. So if you got a sunroof GMC, Chevrolet, that's probably where your leak's coming from. But for all of us other schmoes that don't have a sunroof, it's coming from somewhere else. So before I start taking anything apart in here, I'm going to go into the hood and see what the cowl panel area looks like. This is currently our friend, our Lasco fan. We definitely want to dry it out, and I think it's pretty obvious that, you know, the uh, you got to get it dried out for mold, mildew, etc. So you want to get things up, get air underneath it, and I've been letting the air blow for, um, I don't know, 24 hours now, and I'm going to continue to let it blow. I want it nice and dry. Let's get under the hood and see what's going on there. Before I take the windshield wipers off, I'm going to show you a little hack you probably didn't know. Um, got the wiper arms raised up here so you can see, and then we'll go ahead and take care of business. Check this out. Uh, so you see that little black mark on the windshield right there? That black mark is the zone that the windshield wiper arm should be in when they're at rest. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cycle the power on, drop the wipers back where they belong, unbolt them, get them removed, and uh, when we put them back on, guess what? Put them back in the exact right spot. This clip off the cowling cover. Over here and started twisting on this hinge plate cover. Here's a screw right there. Starhead screw. Torx. So gonna need to get to that to get this bad boy coming off. Now that I have the wipers lowered down to that mark where they belong when they're at rest, we're going to use a 15 millimeter. So according to the experts on the internet, you should just be able to wiggle your wiper arm off after you remove that nut. Mine's not wiggling. Got the big can of the blaster. Put a little of that on there. Let's see if that's gonna make it any more likely to wiggle off. Let's, oh, boom! Look at that, guys. Little lube goes a long way. 
All right, here we are on the passenger side. I had to go get the exact right size tool for this antenna. It's a good thing, good thing that I had the exact right size. Mm, mm, mm. Maybe not. Goodness. Well, that's not good. I mean, we don't want to break that off and that is not playing nice. I haven't a clue. I'm going to put this back in this way, but just in case you didn't believe it, you can take the cover out with the antenna still in. Uh, little scrapes and scratches, but it's out. Mm -hmm. Torx action. Yellow. Something's keeping it. Oh. There. Looking around. Sounds like there's a big truck out in the street out there. So my first impressions is there's just, there's nothing jumping out at me here that screams problem. Now I've noticed this is a similar design right here as they've had on these things. For a lot of years and I've seen people say that this cover is ultimately their problem take you over here I'll show you what it looks like on this side I've already been prying on it a little bit, so I lifted that up earlier, but it's got a heavy foam underneath here. Okay. Cal screen in here. Here's how your, your truck breathes. And, uh, you know, obviously, obviously this can be the source of a leak. It's right where it's dropping down. This bad boy right here, though, I mean, she's tight. Really tight. I have to take some time and look at this and think about it. Certainly give me an op certainly give me an opportunity to clean that crap out of it. I decided to take some alcohol and clean around the perimeter of that box that water was coming in. Just looking at my elbow, aren't you? I'm gonna wipe this down a little bit more and uh, think about it for a while. Hey, what a difference um, a couple days make. The sun is beautiful today, just gorgeous, but it's going to rain some more. This is the rainy season here in Alaska. We've given this a few extra days to continue drying. I've had the fan just blowing and keeping the uh, uh, carpet and the matting up with some blocks of wood. Feels pretty good now. Seems like a really good time to risk making it wet again. What I've done is rigged up a funnel 
the funnel is up here in the cowling. Hide this off. And the tip of it here, I can actually swing this around above the, uh, the air box. I'm trying to get water to flush around it to duplicate maybe when I had it sitting out here, I had the truck sitting up on blocks about three inches higher in the front, tilting it back, which would make sense that water could get in there and get on that seal. I've been testing this. Little pouring a little in. And that, just to show you, it's putting the water above the air intake inside the cowl. So far, so good. This is what we want to see. Uh, we want to see it pouring out. So that means the vent on the side is working. The one inside, and I've already been testing this, so you're probably going to see some moisture in here. When I come inside it, I'm not I'm not seeing any activity from uh, running that around the cowl, but I'm going to let you sit in here and watch. I'm going to go out there and uh, I'm going to go out there and see if I can make more come in. I'll pour some more here, and I'm going to move the tip of that funnel around. in the fresh air intake. Tell me what you see. Let's get around here. Also noticing, so I dropped this panel down off camera. But even there, you can see where water is puddling in the panel. And it shows signs of having water in it in the past. I think we're on to the right spot. So this is the panel, the cowling top panel. Pretty simple. Little piece of plastic. It's got some clips on it to snap it in. And then the remnant of that adhesive sealant. It's like a foam flutter sealant that they use to put that onto the cowl of the truck. Um, really hard to get this thing removed. And unfortunately, you know, I can't... I've looked and looked and looked and I just don't see anything screaming at me that it's the source of my leak. But it may be, I mean, based on what we just saw in there, uh, that is where the water comes in. So um, here's what we're going to do. The first thing I did is I went to see if I could buy this new. Um, for reference sake, the part number to this, 1589564, fits the Silverado, Sierra, etc. up to 2013. The new MSRP on this was like five or six bucks. Plenty worth it just to buy one, right? Especially since I did a little damage to it, prying it. Nope, GM doesn't make it anymore. Now, if you're interested, you can go to a place called partsvoice.com, input your manufacturer and the part number you're after, and it'll show you what dealers have it in stock. I found a number of dealers that have this in stock still, but shipping to Alaska and waiting and whatnot, I have opted not to go that route. Um, we're going to try to save this one as much as possible. It's going to spend some time cleaning it up. Let's talk about what we're going to do. So your first temptation when you're trying to seal a water leak on a, anything is probably going to be silicone. Silicone is fantastic 
for a lot of reasons. RTV means room temperature vulcanizing. In other words, it dries just sitting outside. Um, it's good stuff. If it was all that I had to deal with, this would be the way I would go. A tube like this at Napa runs about $19 for just under 13 ounces. This would work in a pinch, but you consider over the lifetime of freezing, warm, hot, back and forth vibrating, that may eventually develop a leak. Plus, silicones don't play well with paint, and if you had a paint issue or whatever later, it wouldn't work. This is from Lord Fuser. It's a urethane-based, one part, so there's no hardener. It's essentially a room temperature vulcanized as well. But this will uh, go in, and it's made to seal seams, and it is a direct automotive uh, component. This right here is as much as $40 a, in this case, 10 fluid ounce container. Pretty pricey, but this is a direct OE style, original equipment manufacturer style material. It does not say General Motors. I'm sure we could have gotten some says General Motors, but in any event, uh, this is a sealer that I can put on here as well as around the air intake vent as a double measure should seal it up. It's also something you can paint over and it's made to work with the car as it expands and contracts with hot and cold over time. Because I'm not getting a new one of these and because getting a new one wasn't real easy if I wanted to, the other thing I'm going to do is use some of this Eternabond. This, this guy's looking a little rough. By the way, go back and watch my RV water leak um, from a couple of years ago video where I used a lot of this stuff. This stuff is really, really incredible and you can create an incredibly long lasting water type bond. Once I get this sealed back to the cow, I'm basically going to layer a few of these over it and not worried about how it's gonna look because all of this goes underneath that cow trim panel. You'll never see it. So what I'm thinking, if I knew that I knew that I knew that that was leaking, I'd probably just clean it up, run some of this over it, call it good. But since we've peeled it out, we're going to have to go through the whole process. Just a note about this as well. This material in here is not the same thing as this, and I'm 100% aware of it. This is a type of uh, adhesive flutter foam material, and um, it requires a special type of applicator that I don't have and at this point just considering even this was 40 bucks um, this the this type of adhesive with the foam thing is pretty expensive and um, again we've got a secret weapon in the Eternabon but I've got to get this cleaner and the only thing I can imagine that might work is going to be applying some heat to it see if I can make this clean up a little bit, then have to clean it on the truck cowling as well. Just clean everything else up to make sure that our Lord fuse uh, properly. Attaches and seals. So it's looking pretty good. A little uh, 10 15 minutes of my time. And this old panel about ready to go back on the truck. I'll be vacuuming this out. Because I could actually end up what I'm doing here, causing a blockage of the natural vent drain. Double, triple check everything I can. I mean, I've cleaned it a couple times already, still coming out pretty dirty.
you look inside it. Now ultimately I'm gonna be just be pushing a bead, a sealant around that box, that air intake, just to make double, triple sure. I don't have a crack in the seal. Onto my finger, that's the plan. There we go. It's a little wide right there. I'll come down here and test it. That's what I want, so I'll show you what I've done after I've done it. So this is what I've done. Seal it best I can, blind on the other side, trying to get that sealant up and over the lip of this guy to double, triple, make sure that we're not getting anything in. And I also rub some along the seam. See if I can. Yeah. You're seeing things I can't see right now. So that's the plan. And boy, could I use a powered caulking gun. So maybe if I ever made money off YouTube, personally would spend it on a powered caulking gun. Okay, I'm gonna go get the cover. It's all gooped up, ready to go. All right, some people say that too much is perfect. I say if some is good, more is better. All right. Ooh, buddy. That is a goopy mess right now. Look at that. All right, let's let this dry and then we'll come back and run the Eterna Bond over it. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna take advantage of the drying time to clean up. Uh, I don't know, my, uh, maybe you're like my dad was. He could work on anything and not ever really get that dirty. I walk past grease, it sticks to me. Glue, goop, sticks to me. It's why I try to wear work shirts, because it sticks to me. But anyway, uh, a little acetone, some paper towels. I think I got it cleaned off. You know, when, uh, the, when the video started out, I think I was letting you know, I, uh, I'm still in the process of recovering from some knee surgery. We are a week since, doing a little better. Um, wasn't doing so well when I first turned the camera on, but in any event, I can't clean this off my arm, okay? That won't clean off my arm. If you are a uh, phlebotomist or a nurse, I absolutely, my hat, if I had one, tip it towards you for doing a great job doing your thing with needles. Some of you, you struggle, you know? This is why I'm not a nurse, because I would probably do this to everybody that I got my hands on, but it'll heal. It's not painful, but it's a reminder of where I was a week ago. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna clean all this stuff up. We're gonna let that dry really well, and then, Gonna get out the Eternabond. Eternabond. Hey, look at that. That's sticky stuff. I mean, sticky stuff. All right, good morning. You would never think that this little job could turn into really more than a week worth of time and effort, but that's where we are. So, welcome back. It is uh, early morning, pouring rain outside, nothing like yesterday and we are up here ready to go with the Eterna Bond. So uh, while you were taking a nap just a second ago, I was busy cutting up. Well, I went to the coffee shop this morning, but outside of that I was busy cutting up strips of my Eterna Bond. This really looks good, I have to tell you. I'm 
I'm not disappointed with how this uh, seam sealer went in. I know that this thing is solid. But if some is good, more is better. So we're going to go in here and lay up some strips of this Eterna Bond. And let me tell you, if you are suffering one of these leaks in your truck, I would actually recommend that you clean this panel. Start out by Eterna Bonding it. Don't, don't go to this extreme. But let's see what we can do here, and we're going to add this stuff. Nasty sticky. It's completely unforgiving. There's a lot of theories out there. The best way to start your clear release, twisting it, I don't know, cussing at it. There it is. So that's, that's how your layer comes off. Uh, thing you always start at the lowest section and work your way up so what I'm gonna do is overlap this bottom seam place it press it uh, your local RV store will have it Amazon has it you can go straight to the Eterna Bond website, buy it. Okay, so this, this is getting tricky. Can't let it touch itself. Not till you're ready. So I'm going to loop up under the windshield. And there we go. This is instant sealing. Not like the seam sealer, I had to wait for it to dry and whatnot. So, I mean, if you're experiencing a leak, like now, you can seal it with this stuff. That's sealed. All right, you gotta love this. So I'm cleaning up this panel. And uh, look right here, look at this. How long, how long has that been hiding in there? And you know that, I may throw this in some oil and see what happens. This is a good old, it's got the wobble head on it, which is kind of neat. But um, yeah, I mean, check your tools. Count your tools before you go in the job. Count when you come out. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, but I can tell you, somebody somewhere is going, man, I'm one extension short of a full box. Pretty neat, huh? Clean all this junk up. The back. Maybe. Think. Ha! Look at that. Something just happened. <sighs> yeah. All right. So it. There. That wasn't going in right the first time. So. Now we got the push pop on. Right there initiates the um, proper position. And now just tighten it down. Okay. You can't see it, I'm sure. But I'm working to line that puppy up. On the windshield mark. Put this one in now with the antenna in place. Here we go. Gonna drop it down over the mast. Okay, got it over the mast. See, maybe lower the hood a little. Definitely giving me more forward room. Okay, that's better. You know what? That was easy. Look here, if you can't get that off, if you can't get your antenna off, don't sweat it. That that was easy. This is our this is our airbag connector that has become compromised from the uh <clears throat> from the water intrusion. Not good. Uh it doesn't look terrible in there, but it's not great. So 
I'm gonna dielectric grease that, snap that back as well as this guy because they definitely were getting peed on before we put the interior trim back. Put some of this. I'd already done this when I had the truck apart before. Okay, what's our saying? If some is good, more is more better. There we go. Mmm. Mm. It's a satisfying sound. Oh yeah. Ready? Ready? Mmm. Yeah, baby. That's a satisfying sound. Okay. Like so. I don't know which way it goes. Probably this way. Yeah, close enough. All right. This panel goes on. Hey guys, thanks for coming along with this video today. Wet, rainy stuff. You know, a truck ought to be able to be parked in the rain and they ought to be able to keep the water out, but sometimes things go wrong. And when they do, you gotta fix it. So this is a pretty common issue, um, cow leaks in uh, these GM trucks. Hopefully what we've done here today is gonna fix it. Actually, over this last week. If you have a leak in yours, remember, it could be coming from multiple sources. Number one, if you have a sunroof truck, you probably ought to check out your sunroof drains. Plenty of videos out there about those. Number two, if you've recently had a windshield installed, that could certainly be an issue if they didn't put it in right. Uh, number three, look down along the door hinge area where the rubber grommet goes in uh, for the wiring harness. Make sure it's intact, not cracked open. Uh, I think we're up to D or E. So number four, uh, you want to look into that cowling panel. Under that cowling panel, there could be a number of things. Number one, the actual drain that's in the side of it may be clogged or stuck. So you want to get that open, vacuum it out, clean it, make sure it's flowing. Uh, number two, the seal around the air intake, the fresh air intake for your HVAC system could have developed a uh, leak. Uh, and then probably the most likely thing is that little cover that goes on top. If I were you, I'd get some Eterna Bond, maybe some Flex Seal tape, if it's easier to get your hands on. Clean up that upper cover, just seal that upper cover. Try that out first before you go crazy. But um, in any event, make sure you take the time to dry it out inside because water getting into the electrical connections is gonna cause airbag problems, power windows, power door locks, whatever. It's gonna cause problems because it's leaking right on those connectors. Whoever engineered the vehicle engineered it perfectly so that said leak would fall right on the connector. Anyway, we're going to call this one done and put it back together. Hopefully, hopefully get some camping out of this thing before, before it goes bad. This is Labor Day weekend, my wedding anniversary weekend, uh, my recovering from my knee surgery weekend. And um, uh, it's also the Alaska State Fair weekend. A lot of things going on this weekend. And I'm sitting here working on a water leaking truck. But anyway, thanks for watching. I will catch you guys on the next one. Please subscribe. I really appreciate your feedback. And join me for the next adventure.